the deputy president did mislead the public, the deputy president did leave below the expectations of the office that he holds, made unfounded sensational statements, and therefore that ground should be upheld for his impeachment. Mr. Speaker, further to that, in the oath of allegiance to office, the Deputy President swore, and I quote, to refrain from directly or indirectly revealing such matters as shall come to my knowledge in the discharge of my duties and committed to my secrecy. Mr. Speaker, as you would notice in that clip, the Deputy President says that he has been told in confidence. Mark the words, I have been told in confidence by officers of the following, the following, the following. And while aware that he took an oath not to diverge information that comes to him in secrecy, he went ahead and diverged that information. I will be inviting this House to find that the Deputy President breached his own oath of allegiance to office. And a person who breaches his own oath of allegiance to office is not fit to hold the office of the Deputy President. I therefore urge members to find that this ground has been proven to the required standard and uphold it for impeachment. Under Ground 9, Mr. Speaker, on gross misconduct, gross misconduct has been defined as the reliction of duty in the Black's Law Dictionary. Gross misconduct has been defined as the reliction of duty and lawful or improper behavior. Mr. Speaker, we have alleged that the Deputy President did breach Article 151B of the Constitution in his utterances against the National Intelligence Service, and that is incompatible with the high calling, dignified status, and the discretion required of the office of the Deputy President. And because I had laid basis in the foregoing ground, I wish to urge members, using the same evidence that I've adduced above, to also find that ground number 10 is also proven. Ground number 9, that is. On ground number 10, gross misconduct on insubordination. We have the evidence of Masi Wanjao in the form of an affidavit that cabinet makes decisions and the deputy president defies. I have video clips in Nyanza where the president did direct, in fact, he said it is primitive for people to say that certain sections of the country cannot receive development by virtue of how they voted in the last elections. And then immediately thereafter, the deputy president repeated his shareholder Kenya government company utterances, directly contradicting the president. In that arrangement, Mr. Speaker, I am submitting that that is insubordination and the evidence that we have tendered in the interest of time on record is enough to prove that ground and members should be able to approve that the Deputy President, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, has been undermining his boss, has been undermining cabinet and therefore is guilty of the offence of a gross misconduct in terms of insubordination. Mr. Speaker, I come to a very interesting last one, which is that the Deputy President has breached Article 151B and Section 34 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. Mr. Speaker, in my bundle of evidence, I have the affidavit of Dr. Andrew Muller, which I would want displayed. Dr. Andrew Muller, Mr. Speaker, was the acting CEO of the Kenya Medical Supplies Agency. Kenya Medical Supplies Agency, through funding of the Global Fund, did advertise for a tender for purchase of mosquito nests to benefit Kenyans. 
the tender was worth about 3.7 billion. In this affidavit, Mr. Speaker, Dr. Andrew Mulwa avers that uh, when he came to Kemsa, and Mr. Speaker, the witness is before the House, but because this is not the trial chamber, we will not lead him in evidence, with, not, nor will he be cross-examined, but he's ready to be cross-examined when we go to Senate. He avers that when he was appointed as an acting CEO of Kemsa, and he came to office, he found the tender ongoing, and one day, the deputy president called him, threatened him, so that he could release a bid board. In his testimony, he says that the com a company that was being funded by the deputy president, if you allow me just to get where, to where the, because this is important, at page 70 to 76, at page 70 to 76, of my band of documents, Dr. Andrew Mulwa avers that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa called me from his mobile phone. The number is provided. On my mobile phone number, the number is provided. And pressured me to surrender to his proxy, the original bid bond submitted by Sobika Impex for the above tender. He told me that he would send a proxy to collect the original bid bond. He goes further to state that Dr. Ikuno Rigathi, who is a son to Rigathi Gashagwa, the deputy president, called me and sent me a WhatsApp message from his mobile phone number, which is provided, claiming to be acting for and on the instructions of His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa. He asked for Sobika Impex Private Limited's original bid bond for the above tender, which he said His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa was trying to collect from Kemsa. Our next year two and marked AM1 are the screenshots and I would like them, they are already displayed on the screen of those messages. Doctor, he goes further to avow that Dr. Rigathi, Dr. Ikino Rigathi, His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa sent sent a one Ogora Wilson Okulo of national identity number that to collect the original bid bond submitted by Sobika Impex Limited. He concludes by saying that given the status, power, threats, influence of the people inf involved in the interference with the investigations and the cover-up of the irregularities surrounding the procurement of treated mosquito nets, I was constrained to surrender the original bid bond to Ogora Wilson Okulo. In short, members, in short, members, please listen to this. In short, I was caught in a tricky situation as there was nothing much I could do as a junior government officer against a sitting deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, this allegation is conf was admitted by none other than the deputy president yesterday live on his interview or live on television. He did confirm that, yes, he called Dr. Mulo. He also confirmed that he called him in relation to a bid bond. And he did confirm that the company called Sobika, the local representative of Sobika, is a company called Cristo. And the company called Cristo is owned by none other than Rigadi Gashagwa and his children. And therefore, there was a di di direct conflict of interest that the deputy president, that the representative the, representative, the local representative of Sobika, which is an international company registered in India, is a company owned by the deputy president. And the deputy president is making a call regarding a tender to a junior government officer. I wonder how many other calls he has made. But I do not need to belabor this point because none other than the deputy president himself did admit on live television yesterday that he did make the call. It was in relation to the bid bond, and therefore I urge members to adopt the evidence of Dr. Andrew Mulwa as the truthful and factual evidence, exhibiting that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa did interfere with the tendering process and also did interfere with the investigation into the same. His Excellency the Deputy President did inform the country falsely 
that uh, no money was lost. Mr. Speaker, you would know that this tender was funded under the Global Fund. And the Global Fund, through letters that we have exhibited, did cancel this funding. And therefore, the Kenyan people lost up to 5 billion Kenya shillings in, and as well a relationship with the Global Fund, which is a major partner in our health sector. And therefore, to allege that no money was lost is false because the Global Fund did cancel the tender and also it affected our relationship in terms of funding from the Global Fund. And we had to do a lot of diplomatic work going to WHO, going to Geneva, in order to restore our relationship with the Global Fund. Mr. Speaker, lastly, members, I have rushed through the grounds because of the time allocated. I have endeavored to provide evidence that all the 11 grounds that are proposed for the impeachment of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa are merited, and there is enough evidence. The work of this chamber is to examine whether prima facie there is a case. The trial chamber is the Senate. And therefore, I want to plead with members of this House. It doesn't matter whether you signed the motion or you did not sign the motion. I have endeavored to persuade each one of you individually that this country requires a serious leadership. And His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa is not part of that, that serious leadership. I have endeavored to persuade each one of you that this country requires leaders who can respect the rule of law. This requ country requires leaders who can respect the Constitution. And His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa is not one of them. And therefore, I take this time to implore on each one of you, besides our political persuasions, to realize that we want the best for our country. This is the country that we shall bequeath to our children. And if the country is destroyed by reckless leaders like His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, there will be nothing to bequeath our future generations. And therefore, persuade each one of you, please vote with your conscience, vote with your, put Kenya first above your politics when you come to vote. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, members of parliament, if you listen carefully to His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, and I did say at the time of giving my notice of motion, I have nothing against him as a person. But I was perturbed yesterday because His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa did insult members of parliament. He insulted the intelligence of members of parliament. Yes. There are members here who are senior lawyers. There are members here who are senior accountants. There are members here who are teachers. There are members here who are accountants. There are members, all of us are respected in our societies. The people of Kenya have elected us to exercise a constitutional mandate in this country. But His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa did say that most of the members of parliament signed the motion without reading it. That is an insult to your intelligence. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, in the live interview yesterday, did say that parliament is a theater of the absurd. In my training as a lawyer, he who insults the jury, he who insults the jury deserves no mercy from the jury. He who insults the jury deserves no mercy from the jury. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has insulted you before Kenyans. I urge you, I urge you to rise up to the occasion. I urge you to rise up to the occasion. Uphold all the 11 grounds. Uphold all the 11 grounds. Uphold all the 11 grounds. Mr. Speaker, there is evidence that I have not gone through. The whole issue of Wamunyoro investments and the land in Embakasi. I have evidence in my bundle of documents that His Excellency the Gadi Gashagwa used his office as the Deputy President, called junior officers at the Ministry of Lands, forced them to forge documents to the effect that Wamunyoro Investment had bought the land in Embakasi long even before it had been registered as a company. That land, that land, Mr. Speaker, belongs to a sickly civil servant. It belongs to a father, it belongs to a mother. Mr. Speaker, we must have a deputy president who is compassionate. I watched the deputy president yesterday on television. 
displaying impunity and arrogance. He told Kenya, yes, I have said Kenya is a company, Mutadu. He said that he has said that Kenya is a company. And apologetically, he said he has said Kenya is a company. Is this the kind of a person you would want to be your deputy president? Members of parliament, I do not want to imagine that anything can happen to the sitting president. I do not want to imagine. But it is also a factual reality that something can happen to the president who is in power today. If anything, and God forbid, happens to the president who is in power today, is this the man you would want to complete the term as president? This man, this man, honorable members, this man called Rigadi Gashagwa has already said that the members of parliament in Mount Kenya are either to Gunia, are either to Gunia, I don't know what that means, or are collaborators, and that he will take them home. He has already said that where I come from, we deserve no development in Ukambani. He has said that the people of Nyanza deserve no development. He has said that the people of Western deserve no development nor appointments from the government. He has said that the people of the coast deserve no development from the government. He has said that the people of Northeastern deserve no development from the government. Those are the people you represent. Those are the people you represent. As you rise up to vote, please have the best interest of your people at heart. I urge you, I urge you, honorable members, as one of your colleagues. I urge you, honorable members, as one of your colleagues. When this motion is finally put to vote, please vote to impeach Rigadi Gashagwa. Please vote to impeach Rigadi Gashagwa on all the grounds. As I conclude, Mr. Speaker, as I conclude, Mr. Speaker, the, I am confident that colleague members of parliament who approve this motion. And I want to assure you, in the event that you vote for this motion, I will also persuasively defend it before the Senate. And I am sure the Senate of the Republic of Kenya will also uphold, and Kenya will have a better deputy president who views the country as a whole. With those remarks, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move and call our able deputy majority leader, the Honorable Owen Bayer, to second the motion. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Owen Bayer, you have 10 minutes. It's okay. Owen Bayer, you may proceed.